lot of cars in the parking lot, but even more school buses. Because it's, this place is just packed with kids today, and the Mets send a kid to the mound in Mike Pelfrey. As you take a look at the activity at City Field, the Ford Colorado Rockies lineup different than last night. Troy Tulowitzki moved up to the number two spot in the order for the first time by Clint Hurdle as he tries to get his team's offense going. He sits down Garrett Atkins, his number three hitter, and plays John Mabry at third base. Sits down Jamie Carroll and plays Clint Barmas at second. Sits down Steve Finley and plays Willie Tavares in center field. Well, Mike Pelfrey in the game. You know, occasionally those managers, they'll just put it in the hat, jiggle it around, <laughs> and whatever comes out. But uh, Mike Pelfrey today, 5.06 ERA. He's handled the right handers with only batting 190 against them, but the left handers have been, left handed hitters have been hurting him with a 400 average. But what a chance today, going up against a lineup that's had trouble scoring runs. They have four regular hitters in the lineup, five if you include the pitcher who are batting under 200 to Mendoza line. Uh, this is a chance for him to shine in this game. And you know, you talked earlier about his sinker and the fact that uh, maybe he's been throwing a little too hard, being a little too juiced up. This is the first time that he's making a start on regular rest this year. Yeah, to be a real good judge, to judge him here, as you see the Lexus starting diva defense for the Mets, Andy Chavez, we know what he can do in left field. Ramon Castro gets the start for Paul Duca behind the plate. Right Reyes, Valentina Delgado. The regular infield, because I think Willie had it in his mind, Pelfi's a ground ball pitcher. Let's make sure we have the regulars in the infield. Willie Tavares will lead things off for the Rockies. Tavares coming over from Houston in the deal that sent Jason Jennings to the Astros. And Pelfrey's first pitch is a knee-high strike. Tavares has struggled in the early going along with most of the Rockies. He's been playing most of the center field, although Steve Finley started the first two games of this series. And Pelfrey's slider misses one and one. Here is Finley, 42 years old. Held in check like everybody else by El Duque last night. Boy, Duque was just tremendous. Both pitchers were great. Aaron Cook worked fast, didn't throw a lot of pitches. El Duque mixed up his pitches. Through that slow curveball to Helton to make an out. Right in on the fists of Tavares, and it's two and two. Willie Tavares, over the last two seasons, has had 115 infield hits. This game is to slap it and go. Best part of Willie as a hitter are his legs, <laughs> the way he runs. One of the fastest right handed hitters out of the box. Belfry has not struck out many. Five strikeouts in ten and two thirds this year, and as we highlighted in his last start on Friday, has not had all that many swings and misses. He's a guy who invites contact and looks for ground balls. There's one of last night's heroes, Damien Easley. Three and two to Tavares leading off. With that being said, he's not pitched that way. He's gone three and two on a lot of the hitters. Mike Pelfrey, when he's pitching well, guys should put the ball in play within the first three or four pitches. And Tavares grounds one to right. Should have plenty of time. And that's the first out of the game. So one out and nobody on. Well, Pelfrey coming into the day had gone to a full count on a higher percentage of hitters than any starting pitcher in the majors. Brian Bruni, Kevin Gregg, both relief pitchers. So uh, Pelfrey obviously has got to throw fewer pitches. He had 92 pitches in five innings against the Braves in his last start. So here is Tulowitzki who had been struggling at the plate until the 10th inning last night when he tripled to right center against Billy Wagner to drive in the Rockies only run and for a while it looked like that run was going to be enough to win for Colorado. It's going to hit your first triple that's quite a thrill to hit it off Bill Wagner. One and one to Tulowitzki who's just 22 years old. Belfry just 23. Paul Duca getting the day off today as Ramon Castro starts, and it's one and two to Tulowitzki. Very nice game plan for Pelfrey so far with the right-handers. His sinker ball in, and I like that he throws that slider for a strike instead of trying to throw it perfect on that outside corner. And the fastball just misses. Two and two to Tulowitzki. It's a lot of twos. <laughs> Matt Holiday, who's no vacation himself, waiting on deck. And the slider misses, and another three and two count for Pelfrey.
Three and two, three and two, says Willie. <laughs> <laughs> and he walked him. So, Pelfrey, who had walked six batters in ten and two thirds in his first two starts, walks the second man to face him. And that's not the guy you want to walk with Holiday and Helton coming up behind him. Ramon Castro out there to talk to Pelfrey is probably, I, I think, one of the best hitters in, in baseball, right handed hitters in baseball, Matt Holiday. Holiday won a silver slugger last year and it's off to a rollicking start. He leads the National League in batting. He already has 33 hits. The problem for the Rockies is only two of those 33 have been home runs. The Rockies are a team that needs to hit for some power and they've not been. Holiday just barely misses an extra base hit as he fouls it down the line. Holiday at 388 starting the day. And leading the National League, Moise Salou, who was second going into last night, dropped to third. And since May 1st of last year, only one person has hit higher than Matt Holiday. That's Joe Maurer of the Twins, their talented catcher. Maurer hit 357 since May 1st of last year. Holiday 346. Maurer became the first American League catcher ever to win a batting title last year. There goes Tulowitzki. Castro with the throw into the runner and safe. Stolen base for Tulowitzki, his first of the year. Well, Clint Hurdle trying to shake up this lineup, gets a little more speed at the top of this lineup. Tulowitzki, even though he's a big guy, he's got good speed. It looked like Mike Pelfrey, who's really slow to the plate anyways, was not paying as much attention to Tulowitzki as he should have. Tulowitzki, who came up last year, had three steals, now his first of this season. So a runner at scoring position for Holiday. And he fouls it away. Let's see, we've seen Tulowitzki's arm. We've seen him drive the ball the other way, so we see he has some power. Tulowitzki, he's a tools guy. <laughs> That's right. I think he has more than two tools, though. I think, could we just call him tools? That's right. It'd be a lot easier. One and two to Holiday. Grounded to Reyes, Tulowitzki advancing, and that's the second out. Tulowitzki, even with the ball hit in front of him, able to advance. Well, it was a good read for Tulowitzki because what happens, Pelfi throws a sinker in on the hands of Holiday, and he really gets jammed with that, so it's not a hard hit ball. He can proceed, and he did get a good jump to third base, but it's one of those plays you better be safe. See that sinker in? He could hear by the crack of the bat or the lack of the crack of the bat that that was not hit that hard. So here's Todd Helton with a runner at third and two down and Helton takes the fastball inside. Helton two for seven in this series. He has always pummeled the Mets 346 lifetime against New York. But then again he's a lifetime 331 hitter. Just one of the best hitters in baseball the last decade. And Pelfrey falls behind him two and oh. In the beard and, and the eye black, there's not much face left there for Todd <laughs> Helton. He really is in hiding, isn't he? And Pelfrey keeps pounding that inside edge. It's two and one. Todd Helton right in the middle of a nine year, $140 million contract that carries through 2012. And while his numbers were off last year, he was sick part of the year. He's bounced back this season, and he is still one of the best hitters in the game. Pops it up. Valentin out. Beltron in. Tough play for either, and it falls for a hit. And the Rockies take a quick 1-0 lead. A pop fly single for Helton gets the run in. Well, good pitch. Pelfrey threw four straight fastballs in on Helton. This one a little up and just well placed. Good pitching by Pelfrey. Can't take that away from him. Just good hitters seems to good hitters seem to find the holes, and Helton did. Twelfth RBI of the year for Helton. Valentin got the closest, but it was just too far to go. So the Rockies have scored just one run in each of the first two games of this series. Get a first inning run, and here's John Mabry. Veteran utility man takes a strike. Only the second start of the year for Mabry, getting only uh, getting the start for Garrett Atkins, who has been struggling. You see, Mabry hasn't done much with the bat himself early in the season. 
one and one. John Mabry played with the Cubs last year. It's been all over the place. St. Louis, Seattle, San Diego, back to St. Louis, Florida, Philadelphia, Oakland, back to Seattle, back to St. Louis. The regular Mike Morgan. Good change up by Pelfrey, and it's two and two. Brad Hopp, the right fielder, waits on deck. You know, it, it's easy for, for us to say the Rockies lost an excruciating game last night. I mean, here's a team that's been struggling anyway. They're now 8 and 13 on the year. But as a ball club, does it affect you the next day when you lose a game like that? Well, as Mabry goes down swinging. I think it affects you, but uh, you know, we a long, long season. You've got to be used to getting up for games even after tough losses. And the Mets will try and bounce back down one nothing. Only on Sportsnet New York. 30-year-old Josh Fogg on the mound for the Rockies this afternoon. He has never beaten the Mets. 0-3 with a 6.58 ERA in five career starts. Jose Reyes hitless in this series, 0 for 9. And thinks about a bunt as Fogg misses 1 0. Geico Mets lineup, a couple of wrinkles today. Andy Chavez gets the start in left field with Moise Salou getting the day off. And Ramon Castro doing the catching. Reyes lifts one to center field. Tavares back, gets turned around, but he's able to use his speed to outrun the ball. Reyes thought for sure he had gotten it over Tavares' head, but Tavares can really run. Well, Tavares in there tonight, I mean, this afternoon, in place of Finley. If Finley wasn't in there, I don't think he'd be able to catch up with that one. But you're right, Gary. Tavares has some of the best speed in the National League. Went straight back on that ball and just got it in the web on the warning track in center field. Reyes figured, oh, that was a short triple. <laughs> Here's Andy Chavez, one of last night's heroes. You know, I read several places this morning about the pitch that Chavez bunted last night against Ryan Spire and the implication was that the pitch which was a slider in toward his knee was a tough pitch to bunt it it seems to me the contrary would be true absolutely the toughest bunt to bring with you the other way is Chavez goes the other way and Holiday's got it for the second out the toughest one to bring with you towards the second baseman is the ball that's high and away. The one that's inside or down and in is the easiest one. You just drop the head on it and you bring it along as you're running that way. So, no, to hit that pitch down and in, that would be tough. So you see Josh Fogg. Josh Fogg is one of those pitchers that when he's good and gets it rolling, you'll see it early. If he doesn't, he can have some of those scary games like he did in his last start. Three innings, 11 hits, eight runs. That was against San Diego his last time out. Beltron struggling right now, just one for his last 14. After getting off to a ridiculously hot start, it was inevitable that you know, Reyes and Beltron would cool down a little as hot as they have been. Now it's a question of who picks it up from there. Beltron pops it up. Kulowitzki out. Holiday in, Tavares in, and they come together, and Tavares makes the catch. A little miscommunication there in the Colorado outfield, but no harm done as Tavares winds up with the baseball. Three fly ball outs, one of them adventurous. One nothing Rockies as we go to the second. We go to the second inning at Shea, and Brad Hopp takes ball one from Mike Pelfrey. Hop struggling right now over his last 12. And he fists that one foul, and it's one and one. Padres have the uh, Rockies have very young corner outfielders in Holiday and Hop. As Hop lifts one to shallow left, and Chavez racing in to make the catch. 
Andy making it look easy. One out and nobody on. The Cyclones are Brooklyn. Tickets for the Cyclones 2007 season go on sale this Sunday, April 29th at 9 a.m. Get your tickets at Keyspan Park. Online at brooklyncyclones.com by calling 718-507-TIXX or Shea. It's a hot ticket. Get it now. Chris Ionetta, the catcher, starting for the first time in this series. Seen some frustration early. Reyes was frustrated that Tavares made that catch. Hop kicked the sand here, the dirt, because he was mad that Indy Chavez made that catch. And Ionetta, who's been struggling, has himself a one-out single. Just his fifth hit in 33 at-bats this year. And so there's the second hit off Mike Pelfrey. <laughs> and Clint Barmas will come to bat. Clint Hurdle uh, turning over just about his entire lineup today and getting almost all of his bench players in there to try and uh, shake things up for a team that just has not been scoring. And so Barmas starting at second base for the first time. And Pelfrey struggling to throw strike one. Well, it's kind of a strange thing, Gary. You know, you want to develop confidence here that you have confidence enough that your stuff is better than the hitter. The problem is, is that how do you discover if your stuff is better than the hitter until you throw strikes? And if you're not afraid of throwing strikes and getting contact, that's when you can really rock and roll, make something happen. But until that comes to you as a young pitcher, and if you're pitching like a little afraid of the strike zone, you're going to be in trouble. Gets the double play grinder. Valentin with the turn. And that's exactly what the doctor ordered for Pelfrey. 6 4 3 double play gets him through the second inning. Mets come up in the bottom of the second. Welcome back to Shea Stadium. Bottom of the second inning. The Rockies lead the Mets one to nothing. I'm Kevin Burkhardt as it is Kid Fitness Day here at Shea. That's why there are tons of kids in the stands today. In fact, I'm joined now by John Reese, the president and CEO of Kid Fitness LLC. John, first of all, what is Kid Fitness? Well, Kid Fitness is a program to teach children how to live healthy. Obviously, childhood obesity is an epidemic that faces our country. And uh, through Kid Fitness, we hope to reach the entire country through a television series on public television and through our four schools program, uh, which leads us to align ourselves with a major league baseball club like New York Mets. What is the importance as Carlos Delgado leads off the inning here for the Mets? What's the importance of having it here at Shea? Well, we figured we wanted to start this program in New York City. Uh, it's the largest, toughest market in the world, and the school district is also the largest. And we thought if we could roll it out to such a large group of children, uh, we could show how effective the program actually is. It's about making it fun for children. And let's face it, the habits that we learn, the earlier we learn them, good or bad, they stay with us for a longer period of time. During the game, you got a little seventh inning stretch for them as well? We've got a seventh inning stretch. This is also let the older folks. It's not just about the children yeah. need to be healthy, but it's about us adults as well. Now, you know, you're a Yale grad. How did you follow in the footsteps of Ron Darling? I mean, that, that must have been a very, very hard thing to do. You're absolutely right. He's got big feet. And uh, I knew I couldn't do it in baseball, so I had to go out and play lacrosse and football. John Reese, the president and CEO of Kid Fitness LLC. Kid Fitness Day here at Shea. And, John, it's a great thing. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I want to thank the New York Mets. It's a fantastic partnership to reach all the children in New York City. Let's go back across to the booth, guys. All right. Thanks, Kevin. We could all use a little fitness. As Delgado takes the breaking ball for a call third strike and not happy with Bill Wilkie after that call. And that's the first out here in the bottom of the second. Well, the grip for a little slider. You can see Josh Fogg's got that. And he kind of throw a little bit like a football, kind of stiff-wristed. Started on the outside part, came back about three inches. And Delgado thinks this is down and away. You'll see, though, I think you could argue that it caught a little bit of the plate. But I think he thought it was down also. Well, last night John Hirschbeck was behind the plate and he was calling that pitch even further off the plate of strike as David Wright bounces one toward the hole. Tulowitzki with that strong arm throws him out two away. Well, Tulowitzki reminds me of a shortstop the Mets used to have in the 80s. Kevin Elster has a better arm than Elster, but very smooth. Able to throw on the run with that little flip and still get something on it. There's the defense, Rico defense for the Colorado Rockies. We saw Tulowitzki. Holiday, of course, in left field. Mabry getting the start for Atkins, who's been struggling at third base. 
And Clint Barmas starting for the first time at second. Ionetta, the rookie, behind the plate. And the breaking ball in for a strike to Sean Green, who comes into the day seventh in the National League in batting with that 342 average. One and one to Sean. Ramon Castro hitting seventh in the order today, waiting on deck. Mets have been held without a base runner so far by Josh Fogg last night as you look at the construction continuing on City Field. Don't do it, the whole thing might fall down. <laughs> you know what was fascinating when we were over there yesterday? Nobody had a a piece of paper telling them what to do. They all just seemed to know what they were doing. We hope. <laughs> They do. They know <laughs> what they're doing. So many moving parts. 3-1 to Green, and he fouls it off. Well, I know HOK is part of the project, and they certainly have built, I don't know how many stadiums they've built, just baseball stadiums. Uh, forget about stadiums all over the world, so. They've got to have some kind of blueprint that they use over and over and change it a little bit for the personal look for each different city. Wow. It's important to have that harness there. That's how I feel working with Keith. I need that harness. <laughs> Green drives one to deep right field. Hop back and he has room. And that ends the inning. So Green making a bid. But Josh Fogg has retired the first six Mets to face him. Great cut by Green. Yeah, it's got a little toward the trademark. Third inning is Shea and the Rockies pitcher Josh Fogg leading off against Mike Pelfrey. See Fogg not a great danger with the bat. One and one to Fogg who began his career with the White Sox. Traded to Pittsburgh and now in his second year with Colorado. Pelfrey moves him back two and one. It's unusual he was a closer in college. Mm -hmm. Became a starter in the pros which is. Very unusual. Well, to hear Fogg tell it, he he wasn't even a pitcher until his junior year in high school. He was a second baseman. He says I wasn't a very good one, and he got himself a base hit. So those hits that were lacking in a, a, a sophomore in high school, <laughs> he finds one today. Well, two and one, Pelfrey's just trying to throw a fastball. That's a two seamer. You can see it not cross the seams, trying to run this ball in. And I think you're right Gary we've seen it so far this year early in spring training he had a lot of bite had a lot of funny swings from hitters not as many funny right now maybe it's because he hasn't thrown as many innings this year a little too strong Willie Tavares bounced out to David Wright his first time up and Wright's creeping in on the grass and he does drop down the bunt Pelfrey better hurry and he's safe at first base I don't think Mike Pelfrey quite knew how fast Willie Tavares is. And he took a little too much time, and Tavares beat it out. Well, this is an experience, not knowing what you're going to do with the ball, not knowing who the hitter is. You've got to pounce on this and get rid of it as quick as you can. You cannot stand up straight, take your time with a long arm throw. That's got to be a quick pounce on it, pro hop, and get that ball over to first base. And Tavares, that's a beautiful thing to watch for a Rockies fan. One of the few guys in the league who may be able to run with Jose Reyes. So, Pelfrey has himself a situation. First and second, nobody out. We'll see if Tulowitzki is bunting. Takes the first one for a strike. Tulowitzki walked, stole a base, scored a run in the first inning, and to date, that is the only run of the game. You know, I think if you're Clint Hurdle, you'd love to show some confidence in your young player here, Tulowitzki, but when you're struggling for runs and you're batting under 200, as Tulowitzki is, this is a situation to lay down a bunt and try to get your middle of the plate, middle of the line of pitters to get you some runs. Holiday and Helton to follow, and this time he swings away and lines it to Sean Green. Fogg tagging and heading for third, and he'll make it without a throw. That's good base running by Josh Fogg, the pitcher to tag up and move over. And now runners at the corners with one out. Well, fastball is supposed to be in, drifts out over the middle of the plate, and we saw Tulowitzki against Wagner last night with that drive to right center field. Some good power to right field. And pitchers know how to run the bases. 
Well, they know how to tag up. They <laughs> might not know how to run the bases. They know what they're supposed to do. Being able to pull it off is, a, is another thing. Well, now you got Tavares at first, and he's certainly a threat to run in this spot. With Matt Holiday at the plate, so Pelfrey has to have a couple of things on his mind here. Holiday grounded out to short his first time up. And a line drive base hit, and that'll bring home a run. Fog in to score. Tavares racing for third. Beltron's throw goes to second. An RBI single for Matt Holiday, and it's 2 0 Colorado. So the league's leading hitter, Matt Holiday, wasting no time. And we know how he loves to swing at that first pitch, and that ball's up in the strike zone, not down where Pelfrey needs it to try to get a double play. And Holiday makes him pay. And if you watch Boy Tavares, he cuts the corner nice, second base, and turns it on. A different runner than Reyes, you know, a little quieter, but well, he can move. So the Rockies will try and turn this into a big inning. First and third, still only one out, and Todd Helton. Who had a pop fly single to drive in a run in the first. So things not shaking down very well for Pelfrey early on in this game against a team that had been struggling to score. He could use a double play grinder, which is what he got in the second inning to avoid trouble. That starting pitching has been outstanding early in the season, but Pelfrey having some trouble holding up his end. And you know you look around the league at fifth starters and you know, not too many are sure things. You know, you've got patchwork guys you've got young guys and certainly Pelfrey fits into the latter category. Toward the middle and a base hit for Helton and that'll bring home Tavares and it's three nothing Colorado. So Helton drives in his second run of the day. And the Rockies have put together four hits here in the third to score a couple of runs. Well, this is the cross seam grip trying to get that ball inside so it doesn't run back, but it still does right down the middle. The Heltzman has one of the quickest bats. See, when you do the cross seam, what you're trying to do is almost cut that ball, or if you don't cut it in on the left hander, at least it stays true and straight on an inside corner. That pitch did not. Well, Belfry now in a 3 0 hole, and Rick Peterson out to try and provide some counsel. Well, this is my humble opinion. I think that, you know, Mike Belfry obviously has so much talent, but it's obvious he needs a little more seasoning. And, uh, you know, you were talking about a fifth starter, and, you know, it's whether the Mets decide that he needs more seasoning down in AAA or whether he stays here and takes a couple of lumps. For a team that's going to score some runs and uh, and get his work here, we saw the uh, youngest starting pitchers in the league, who's Merrill Petit, just got sent down to make room for Randy Johnson last night. So that crosses one name off that list. But you know the Mets have options in Triple A. Jorge Sosa is off to a terrific start as a starting pitcher down there. Adam Bostic is pitching very well. Jason Vargas. And Mabry hits one long to right center field. Beltron back near the wall, and it's out of here. John Mabry with a three run homer. His first runs batted in of the season. And the Rockies, who have been starved for runs and especially for home runs, have built a six to nothing lead. The Colorado Rockies have gone seven straight games without a home run, the longest streak in their club history. And Mabry breaks that up with a three run homer off Mike Pelfrey. Well, good shot here of the grip of a change up from Pelfrey. Problem is, that Swan had was a little too hard to Mabry. Didn't take enough speed off as middle, middle. And Mabry, of course, is one of those great bench players who come out after not playing a lot and stayed behind that one and got it up in that wind. The wind is rushing out the right center. 2-0 to Brad Hoff, and it's all coming apart for Mike Pelfrey. And the Mets will get some bullpen action going as Pelfrey struggles here in the third as Aaron Seely loosens up. 2-1 to Hoff. The pitcher Josh Fogg got this inning started with a solid single to center. Tavares laid down the bunt, and Pelfrey was a little slow on it, and he has not really thrown a good pitch since. 
like any other sporting event, whether you're a quarterback or a goalie, what happens in these situations when you're young is things just really speed up. And you kind of, the heart starts to beat real quick. You start to get angry because now you've given up the runs. You almost can't see straight because here they have six in and you know, how am I going to right the ship? Three and two to hop. And he fouls it away. You're trying to get some saliva, but there's none there. And the thing you have to do, and uh, as you will do as you get older, is to try to say to yourself, you know, okay, it's over. What, what am I going to do now? How am I going to get better? I got to try something different. Hop goes the other way, and Chavez has it lined up. And that is the second out. And, and you wonder from a mental standpoint, you know, on the bunt by Tavares, you know, Pelfrey probably could have played a little better, a little sharper, gotten an out on that play. And how does that play into what happens after that? How, how for a young pitcher, does he does it linger? Does it affect how he pitches to the next hitter? Well, that's the problem. You're right, Gary. It does linger. And you start thinking about it, and you're embarrassed one that you didn't make the play because you know you should have made the play. And you're saying, oh, here we go again. I got guys in first and second. How am I going to get out of this? Oh, and two to Ionetta. And if he, had, he threw a strike on the first pitch to Tulewitzki, who lined the ball to right, but you know, I think I think he, it does linger, and that's the problem. It shouldn't linger, but it does. The younger you are, the, the, le the less experience that you have. So Willie Randolph and Rick Peters are going to have to figure out what to do with Mike Pelfrey right now. As Ionetta lines a base hit, his second of the day. That is eight hits now off Pelfrey. Six of them here in this five run sixth uh, third inning. A fastball again. And this is part of the problem right Gary is that because of the inability to get his breaking pitches over inability to throw his change up slow enough. He's got to go with a lot of fastballs and when you're facing a young team throwing them a lot of fastballs you're really playing into their house. Barmas pops one foul, but what's stunning about Pelfrey compared to what we saw in spring training, to me as as a layman watching, yeah. is that his fastball isn't moving at all. It's just straight. Well, that's from probably usually from overthrowing. Barmas lines one down the line, and it's foul. And there's also something to be said, Gary, about spring training. Free and easy, balls moving. You know, this is a whole different kind of environment up here. You know, whether you like it or not, um, coming and pitching in front of 25, 30, 40, 55,000 the Mets sometimes have, it's a whole different animal. And you don't know it until you go through it. Farmers trickles one foul. You can try to trick yourself and say, you know what, I know how it's going to be. I know there's a lot of people, it's going to be loud, but you know, I, I'll be able to handle it. Well, you can't handle it until you go through it. And once you go through it, then you go, whoa. This is why they call it the major <laughs> leagues. <laughs> and the sliders popped up, and Pelfrey should finally get through this inning. But it's a damaging one for the 23-year-old right-hander as the Rockies put up a five spot. Base hit after base hit. And the culminating blow, the three-run homer by John Mabry. And the Rockies build a 6-0 lead. Well, the Mets have some climbing to do down six to nothing as they come to bat in the bottom of the third. Ramon Castro leads off against Josh Fogg and takes a curveball for a strike. Castro making his fifth start today and he's off to an unbelievable start with the bat. Three homers, eight RBIs in those 17 at bats. One and one to Castro. Josh Fogg the beneficiary of those six runs and that's not unusual for Fogg last year he was second in the National League in run support he hasn't been getting it lately this year only Steve Traxel had more run support than Fogg last year and Castro lines one into the glove of Tulowitzki tell you what this is a very impressive young player Troy Tulowitzki. 
you know, Castro with his line drive. See how quickly he went to his right. Laid out. I mean, this ball was blistered and hooking at the same time. Good play by Tulowitzki. So one out and nobody on. Here's Jose Valentin. And he takes a strike. Valentin has had a good series, drove in four runs on Monday night and then had a triple in the game last night. Its biggest problem in the game last night was converting their opportunities. They were 0 for 10 with runners in scoring position before the winning hit. As we look at David Newhan on deck, so uh, Pelfrey is done after three innings of work. Valentine down swinging and that's the second strikeout for Josh Fong. Now this was Pelfrey coming off the mound after that top of the third. I'm sure you never use your pitching hand to do that. Don't use any hand to do that. Those walls hit back. I'm not saying I have done it but I'm just saying from experience don't do that. Early call for David Newhan to pinch hit. Newhan appeared as a pinch hitter last night in the 12th inning and struck out. Grounds this one foul. Weekday mornings before you head out the door, check out the CW11's commuter cast from traffic tie ups to train delays. Get up to the minute time saving traffic reports with commuter cast all morning long on the CW11 morning news. And Fogg with back to back strikeouts to finish the third. He's faced nine and retired nine. And it's been all Rockies this afternoon. The NFL draft is all weekend at Radio City, and SNY's Jets Nation crew is on site with full coverage. Jets Nation draft day 07 live, Saturday at 11 a.m. and 9 30 p.m., then Sunday at 10 a.m. and 9 30 p.m. only on Sportsnet New York. Back for our Jeep around the majors. Cecil Fielder, another home run last night in support of Jeff Supan as the Brewers sweep away the Cubs. Miguel Tejada keeps his consecutive game streak going. And very unusual, Torrey Hunter sent some champagne to the <laughs> Kansas City Royals because, what, because they knocked off the White Sox last year? Which gave them the title. Josh Fogg dumps a base hit in front of Sean Green, a ball that looked like it might be caught, but was not. And so Josh Fogg, not a noted hitter, is two for two. Aaron Seeley on in relief for the Mets. And Willie Tavares comes up to bat. Tavares laid down a bunt single and scored a run in the third. And he lays down another bunt. Sealy trying to be a little quicker, but not quick enough. And Tavares has another bunt single. And so the Rockies rollicking again. First and second, and nobody out. Well, he was affectionately known as the franchise. Still is. Still the only Met player who's ever had his number retired. Hall of Famer. Great pitcher. Fun guy. And most importantly, noted winemaker, Tom Seaver. No. No. No, how are you, no. Tom? <laughs> Mr. Cohen, how are you? Mr. Darley, nice to be here. And I am not a winemaker. I am a grape grower, and there's a distinct difference, most of it financial. <laughs> So how are you, grapes? I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> grapes are fine. Good to see you guys. Good to see uh, uh game again. First game I've seen this year. So wow. wonderful, wonderful to be back. Beautiful day. God, we love your weather. This is spectacular. Huh? Well, you didn't pick the right day to watch Mike Pelfrey pitch. Well, I can understand that. But, you know, we all have those kinds of days. Defense seems to be a little bit. Hit him in the back. <laughs> Tulowitzki. Right? Yeah, but I waited 20 years to do that. Now, yeah. I, <laughs> hey, Webby, <laughs> can you run that again? I want to show you. <laughs> I want to show you something I tried to do. He yeah, wasn't in the box, right? Yeah, he wasn't in the box. Now, watch the runner going down the line here. If he is in fair territory, 
You can hit him square in the back. You get an out, and the runners get to go back to the base. Hit him right in the back. <laughs> hit him in the back, baby. He's fair game right there. That's like deer in the headlights. And the runners and, have to go back. And it's an out, and the runners go back. You, you know, get they, the out. They tried to do that with J.C. Martin, and they didn't get the call. <laughs> I if know. Recall. That one you would have gotten, though. <laughs> that waited 20 years for one of those plays, and I show up today, and there it was. Oh, God. Matt Holliday takes the ball. How you guys been? We're doing great. Good for you. It's been a lot of fun. Bob's doing well. We've, huh? we've missed you, though. Nah, <laughs> as my wife would say, it's a good miss, though. <laughs> <laughs> honey, I got to go to New York. Well, I'll miss you, honey, but it'll be a good miss, believe me. <laughs> 2 to Holiday. Hey, we had Jerry Kuzman here um, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we got to talking about pitchers and mechanics mm -hmm. and how you get yourself righted when things are going wrong. And he told us that when you and he played together, you were basically each other's pitching coach as Holiday singles up the middle and that'll bring home two more and the Rockies go up eight to nothing. He was talking about how he'd be on the mound and he'd look over into That's the right. dugout and you would flash him signs. I would you, you, you point we would point to an area uh, like I look for I look at Jerry he look at me and we look at mechanics and stuff and I, if I were look, to look at him he would point to, to the uh, left elbow. If he felt like I was going to the flying wrong open. or flying open, you know, Ron knows exactly what I'm talking about. You're trying to throw the ball 150 miles an hour. Your left side flies out. That makes your right side go down. Everything becomes flat, etc. And if you just look at each other, and he would point. And sometimes he'd point to my left knee. You're not finishing your left, your leg kick. Well, if you rush that, everything falls behind, and the release point, you know, falls out. So, and the same thing with Kuzi. You know, he would. He used to have a. He used to slide. His hips would slide every once in a while. Then if you're doing every, everything we're talking about yeah. is that the arm gets behind, That's you know, right. and you can't get to your, you know, your release spot and you get the wrong plane going to home plate. But we would keep an eye on each other and be our, you know, be, you know, pitching coaches within, you know. Uh, and it was very beneficial. You're right. Kuzi used to have, sometimes you wouldn't sit long enough, right? Yeah. You'd get that body would start sliding yep. to the plate and then Bill Truman always, you stay back, stay, right, stay back, back there. Stay back, stay back. Stay back. Don't, you know, don't. Get your rear end ahead of everything. You know, let it all come together. And Helton drives one deep to the right field corner. Green can't get it. It's bouncing away from him. Holiday will score. Helton settles for a double. Nine to nothing, Colorado. What a difference a day makes. By the way, this might be the last game they allowed him to come out of the Elton three for three with three RBIs. What's the uh, what's that old saying that the uh, country some some days there's diamond and some days there's stone. That's right. Well, it's a stone day here. It's a little cutter by Aaron Seeley. That ball did not get inside Helton though. Hard to get in on him. He's about as quick. Reminds me of Paul Molitor as far as being quick inside because they have that short stroke. Yeah, I don't see that. That's a pitch I don't understand. It's a, I mean, I, it, it looks like. A missed sinker to me. Yeah. And you, you start it on the inside. If it's a sinker, it's got to end up in the middle of the plate. That's right. That's I right. mean, your sinker's got to be on the, at least the outside quarter. And then if you miss, you miss away. And the, the location doesn't. I don't know where that. Well, what do I know about this? <laughs> <laughs> Mabry lines one to Valentin, and that'll be a double play <laughs> to end the inning. So the Rockies finally make a mistake. It's Helton. Lines into the double play and let Tom hang out a little longer. I haven't had long enough. <laughs> oh, well, well, we'll make sure you do then. The great Tom Seaver joining us here in the booth. The highlight of the day so far, 9-0 Rockies. Jose Reyes leading off the last of the fourth inning against Josh Fogg, who now has a 9-0 lead and has not given up a base runner yet. It's a nice comfortable position for a pitcher <laughs> to be in. Not bad. It's better than it's better than taking a shower in the fourth inning. Wouldn't you say, Ron? Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Those are no fun. No, no fun. Beer in a shower in the fourth inning Beer is no shower. fun. And it's how many bars of soap can you crush against the wall? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, now the Mets have a base runner on the blue pit by Reyes. This is a little broken bat single. One of the great things about the players with speed is that the people in the outfield are playing so deeply because they're trying to protect the real big multi, you know, multi-base hit. And you get all these little duck snorts that keep falling in. That's speed is one of the great assets of the game. 
Well, he thought he had one over Tavares' head the first time that he ran down, so found a different spot. And here's Andy Chavez. And he goes after the first one. They get the out at second, but not at first. Well, Tulowitzki does like to show off his arm, doesn't he? It's like those catchers. If you have a catcher who has a good arm, what does he do all game? Firing at the first base, firing at the third, trying to pick people off. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody's ever gotten a higher percentage of Hall of Fame votes than Mr. Seaver. And uh, you can see why from those numbers. And uh, you didn't exactly get, you know, six runs per game when you were pitching here to work with, did you? There were just a day or two when I said, get me a run, boys, and we'll be <laughs> out of here in about two hours and ten minutes. <laughs> right, Ron? There's well, certain days you knew that was he said. That's it. If I get a run, I'm in good shape. Well, yeah. you told me in some of those teams in 68, <laughs> a Mets rally was a three and one count. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on who, who the count was on, though, by the way. Some guys did. <laughs> How difficult uh, is it for you to watch the way the game is played in terms of pitching now compared to when you It pitch? depends on who the pitchers are. I mean, uh, some are, you know, I've, I, would, I would surmise that Ronnie and, uh, and I are in the same boat on this. Some are old school, some are new school, et cetera. Uh, but you see guys, you know, the Maddoxes and the Schillings and the, those kinds of pitchers are kind of old school. I am, you've got to be ahead. You can't, you can't be behind. You've got to work quickly. You can't nitpick. You've got to be aggressive. Uh, and in many ways, it seems like it's gotten, I've, uh, it's gotten too scientific. Because if you don't do the ABCs correctly, there is no foundation and nothing can be built on top of it. Yeah. It'll all crumble. You know, there's just none of strength. So if you don't throw first pitch strikes, get the first man out in the inning. That's that's really the biggest thing. It really is. The first everybody that walks up there is going to be strike one, and the first guy that walks up there is going to be an out. That's it. Boom. That's 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 the cardinal rule right there. And then from then on, you can be creative, and you can, you can be creative within the game depending on what you have to work with, and that changes within the game, and you have to monitor yourself. Your catcher has to monitor you. Monitor you, yeah. so you know where you are. I mean, Ronnie knows exactly what I'm talking about. It can about. change from game to game, from inning to inning. You Absolutely. can change what you have. Absolutely. I was telling somebody this story. So I, I would warm up at, in, uh, down there in the bullpen, and I'd have nothing. I mean, nothing. It just wasn't there. And I would go by the water cooler, put dirt on my hand, and rub it on my knee. I'd come to the mound, and I would <laughs> kick. I said, God, sure. I'd go to the mound I'd out there, and I would kick the dirt out in front of the rubber, facing that visiting dugout over there. And so those guys would look at me and see the dirt on my knee because it give you, if you, if you just get a psychological edge for three or four outs, all of a sudden, boom, you got it. Now you throw a pitch and it explodes out of your hand. You say, goodbye, boys. See you later. Well, you know, I was looking at all the records, Tommy, as you see your favorite. I want to tell you, this is Webby. Webby. <laughs> He's cruel. I've gone, I've gone to bed a lot of nights thinking about you or that, you know. <laughs> your, head, friend. Head. your friend, your <laughs> friend, and I knew, I knew you would bring it to my plate here today, and I appreciate it. You are a very sensitive guy. David Wright with two out and two on takes the strike. Well, there's that knee, drop and drive, Tom. The old drop and drive. I don't think you'd sell that today's no. game. It's tall and fall now. <laughs> tall and fall. <laughs> <laughs> Right, it's one slowly, and Tulowitzki makes the play to end the inning. Well, it Good is always you great guys. having you yeah, here. You're you. always welcome. Thank Good you, luck sir. with the grapes. Thank you. Good to see you, Ronnie. Thank you. Good to see you. Tom Seaver joining us here in the booth on what has been just an awful day for the Mets. Good having Tom with us, though. Brad Hopp leads off the fifth inning, driving one down the right field line, and the Rockies' barrage continues. And this is a team that has not been able to score this season. I mean, they're averaging 3.4 runs per game. They hadn't hit a home run in seven games. And everything, every swing they take today, they're hitting ropes. But they do have good hitters, and you knew at some point they were going to break out of it. The Mets were just hoping it wasn't this Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> Chris Iannetta came in slumping. He's already two for two today. The Rockies have 13 hits with nobody out in the fifth inning. And Seeley, starting his second inning, throws a strike. Mike Pelfrey lasted three innings, allowed six runs and eight hits. 
Clint Hurdle shook up his lineup today and I guess it's paying off for him. And the curveball misses to Ionetta one and one. I'll tell you one thing on Friday or Saturday probably when I look at the box score I want to see the Rockies box score to see if he has the same lineup because he better have the same lineup after what they did today. We're doing today. Silly works him inside two and one. It was fascinating listening to Tom and it always is because when he starts talking pitching you listen. I love the one line he said I you know maybe I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, it's interesting because you, you look at. The way. Tom talks about pitching. And then you look at all the success that Rick Peterson has had as a pitching coach talking about pitching in an entirely different way. And I'd be fascinated to sit and listen to them talk to each other. I bet you they have more similarities than you think. Because I, their personalities are so different. They're raised in a different time. Um, I think athletes are a lot different than you know Tom was raised with pitching coaches that gave you a swift boot uh, when they didn't like what you're doing not to take you aside and put their arm around you and say hey these are the things we can do. It's just a different time. Ionetta stops the swing and he held it in time ball four. Well, it's time for a baseball day in New York update. Let's go to the studio in Matt Yellow. All right. Thanks a lot Gary last night in St. Petersburg. Devil Rays Yankees and Carl Crawford delivers the big blow against Mike Myers lefty on lefty a grand slam Yanks have lost five straight Andy Pettit tonight in the Bronx. All right Matt and uh, Clint Barmas takes ball one. The Yankees could use a win. It, it just seems you know it's one of those Murphy's Law type type of Aprils for them. It doesn't matter who they throw in there late in that bullpen they just can't get the job done. Barmas is 0 for 2 and uh, Sealy be falls behind him 2 and 0. Well, they finally uh, they got a starter pitching into the seventh yesterday with uh, with Wong coming off the disabled list. Two and one to Barmas. Well, they got Messina coming back next year. So. I mean next week. Philip Hughes coming up tomorrow as we look at our New York Lottery Rockies box score. A lot more going on there. A lot of crooked numbers, by the way. Todd Helton having a big day, three for three. Three run scoring hits. Matt Holiday also three RBIs. Popped up. Infield fly rule should be invoked. Batters out. Wright's got it one away. You know, it's funny to listen to Tom talk about pitching because you know when I was a young pitcher and was traded from Texas to the Mets all the things that Tom talks about is what you were taught as a Mets pitcher those things first strike first guy up you got to get out work aggressively um, they also taught us to you know be aggressive inside the hitters be mean Josh Fogg already two for two at the plate but called upon to bunt this time now what's that all about it's nine to nothing. He's got two hits. Wouldn't let him swing the bat. Well, I'll tell you right now, if I was pitching, he wouldn't swing the bat on this next pitch. You know, because uh, he'd be on his fanny, personally. It's nine to nothing. Well, you're the second pitcher who's now talked about hitting somebody today. Have I? <laughs> well, that's <laughs> right. That's Tom, right. Tom, Tom <laughs> talking about hitting the runner. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking ball strike, and it's 0 and 2. Yeah, I guess you guys were. Brought up to be aggressive, <laughs> huh? Well, I don't know. It's nine nothing. I mean, let him swing the bat, make an out, go from there. Let him make two outs. Yeah. Well, he made an out. First strikeout for Sealy, and that's the second out of the inning. Well, he's got the curveball that he tries to pull with his middle finger, kind of flip with that thumb. And that has always been the best pitch for Aaron Seeley, even early in his career. He's kind of a guy that spotted his fastball and had that big 12 to 6 hook. You know, Aaron Seeley has won 145 major league games. And yet, you always got the feeling, at least from, uh, from Red Sox fans, because that's where he started out. That he his career was something of a disappointment. Well, what happened to him is that he played on some teams that weren't so great in Boston, and also 
he was tagged as going to be the next guy to come up and strike out a lot of hitters. That's not the kind of pitcher he was. And then he got that label that no pitcher ever wants. And it happens to guys whether they deserve it or not. But from the Boston fans that he was a little soft, that he wasn't as uh, tough as he should be. And listen, if you win 145 games, you're tough. Two and one the count to Tavares. Look what happens, Gary, with big guys. And Aaron's a big guy, 6'5", 6'6", 220 pounds. But you just expect him to be like Roger Clemens. He's going to blow people away. Never was that kind of pitcher. Always relied on that curveball, and he throws it to Tavares, who lines a base hit. Hop around third, and he'll trot in to score, and it's 10 to nothing, Colorado. Third hit of the game for Tavares. First two were on bunts. This one, he got on the breaking ball and lined a hit. And it's amazing how quickly the euphoria of last night has turned into the debacle of today. Well, again, another curve, but this one hung in the middle of the plate. And Deveris likes that ball down. He likes to hit line drives and ground balls and take advantage of that speed. And that's a couple of times there's been some comebackers right through the box of just missed that pitchers. Ten runs and 14 hits for the Rockies. Here's Tulowitzki with two out and two on. And he takes the curveball for a strike. Tulowitzki is walked, lined out, and sacrificed. Well, Aaron Seely has given up four runs in an inning and two thirds but he's not coming out of the game anytime soon. No. That's going to ask him to soak up at least another inning after this. Hey, think you have the best hat collection in New York SNY and New Era are teaming up to find out and the winner gets an autographed game worn Mets cap the New Era hat collection contest log on to SNY TV to enter and win. One and two to Tulowitzki. I'm thinking about that comeback with Aaron Silly. You know what was the greatest thing that could happen to you in spring training as a young pitcher with the Mets? That you would be invited to play in Tom Seaver's pepper game. Because <laughs> he used to have a pepper game where he stood about 30 feet from you and he hit it three quarters as hard as you'd ever see a pepper game played. And if you weren't good enough, you wouldn't get the invite. Right with a nice stab. And he'll go to first to get Tulowitzki to end the inning. But the Rockies tack on another run. Halfway through, and it's 10 0 Colorado. This year, when you can't be home to watch your Mets on SNY or CW11, check out MLB.tv. You can log on to the internet to watch every out of market Mets game of the season live, catch those you missed on demand, or listen to every radio broadcast live. Sign up today for MLB.tv. An unparalleled live baseball experience. For more details, visit Mets.com where the baseball is always on. Sean Green takes ball one. Green flied to right his first time up, and he drives one to right, and in comes Hop, but he can't get it. Got the glove on it, but it trickled out. And it's a base hit for Sean Green. Well, Green keeps on hitting as you watch Hop had it. But when he fell down, it came out of his glove. He did make a nice aggressive play here, gets his glove on it. He's known for his outfield assists, not always for his outfield play. But good try there by Brad Hop. By the way, if you're wondering how long you have to hold the ball for it to be a catch, it's not a matter of length. As Ramon Castro takes a strike, you have to be able to take the ball out of your glove in order for the catch to count. Control. Right. But if the uh, if you catch the ball and you're lying on the ground unconscious and you can't take the ball out of your glove, it's not a catch. We saw that with Mike Cameron in Houston two years ago. He caught a ball and was, you know, trying to take it out of his glove and didn't do it. Wow. Fell out of the glove and uh, it was ruled no catch. Ambiorix Burgos up in the bullpen. Still 0 2 to Castro. What did Castro do? Where did he foul that ball? Right off his ankle. Oof. Right in the inside of his left ankle. Just, that bone. just yeah, just feel down there and feel that bone, and then just think of a ball hitting that at about 90 miles an hour. 
It's the second shot Castro's taken today. He took one behind the plate as well. So Ramon's okay. Weekday afternoons between 4 and 6. Log on to CW11.com for live traffic updates from the CW11's commuter cast. Check with commuter cast before you hit the road to find the fastest way home or the easiest way to shave. 0 oh 2 to Castro with Green at first and nobody out. That's just looking to get on the scoreboard at this point. If you're wondering, the Mets have never come from 10 runs down to win in their 46 year history. The largest deficit they've ever overcome was eight runs. I got nothing to do. Let's go. Well, we're only halfway through the game. Still one and two to Castro. That's now with three hits off Josh Fogg, whom they lit up. The last time they faced him in Colorado last year. I mean, they just knocked him all around Coors Field, knocked him out in the second inning, scoring eight runs against him. So, this is a nice comeback effort for Fogg against the Mets. I remember that night. I was there with you, and it was, boy, is he done maybe? I mean, but found out later that he had those blown spurs, he had those taken out over the winter, and thrown a lot better. I mean, it's easy to say because it's 10 to nothing, but he is throwing so much better than he did that night in Colorado. Three and two to Castro as the Mets look to build something here in the fifth. A little flare, and it's short hopped, and that could be a double play, not quite in time to get Castro. Barmas played it on the short hop. Green had no idea where to go. So they got the easy force, and with Castro running, there was a chance for a double play. Well, Barmas probably could have came in and made that catch, but he timed it to get that short hop. And Tulowitzki might have that gun, but he's still working on trying to get that ball out of his glove. Interesting, he went after it, Tulowitzki, with just his glove hand. Usually shortstops go with both hands together, so it's easier for them to get rid of the ball. That cost him. Valentin pops the first one foul. And that's in the seats. Valentin struck out his first time up. Let's have the day off tomorrow, and then they'll be in Washington over the weekend. Willie will have Oliver Perez going to the mound on Friday night, looking to back up his tremendous performance against the Braves on Saturday. Can't pitch much better than Perez did against Atlanta, despite giving up nine hits in that game. Valentin fouls it back because it's like Tom was saying, strike one. That's right. You know, I was looking at all Tom's records as a Met, and he had 198 wins. So I said to myself, well, I guess a pitcher could come as a phenom and get 198 wins. Maybe, all right. Uh, won 20 games four times. Well, certainly someone. Who won 198 might be able to win 24 times, but I'll tell you one they won't get 171 complete games as a Met. Mm. 171. That's amazing. Craziness. How about this? You know, Marty Noble came in here early.